G'day, it's Peter Price again from Classroom Professor. Welcome to the third video in this series on developing number fluency. So I hope that you've enjoyed the previous two videos. If you, for whatever reason, you didn't see them or you want to watch them again, then you can follow the links on this page. But now we're moving on. So I want to put it all together. So I want to talk more about the system that I'm recommending for developing number fluency through mental strategies and talk about some of the component parts and so on. So I thought I'd start by talking a little bit more about the 10 frame examples. I think um, it's such a big topic. We can use 10 frames for so many different um, types of number work that it's worth spending a bit more time on. So here's another example. So I said last time that using 10 frames is recommended for any early number work um, with the early year students, particularly for number facts, but also for learning about teen numbers and regrouping and you know a wealth of topics at this level. So let's look at a doubles number fact. The beauty of the 10 frame is that because there are two rows of five squares, every double can be shown by a separate row of coloured counters and of course if we use two colours we can see quite e easily. And 5 plus 5 is a nice easy one but 5 plus 6 what would that be? Well it doesn't take much for a child to be able to visualise this and see that 5 and 5 is one more than, uh, sorry 5 and 6 is one more than double 5 which is 11. Let's look at a slightly harder one. What about um, double six? One way of showing double six would be to put six in each of two ten frames like that and then ask the students what can they see and what number can they see? And as I said before, we can encourage our students to think for themselves and recognize what is um, visible here in the pattern. And so they should be able to see that if we moved all of these five over to here, we would have two left and so we would have the number 12. Here's another example. So we'll start with uh, seven this time. And we're going to do seven plus three, which is what we call a rainbow number fact. So the pairs of facts that add up to 10. So with or without the three blue counters, we can ask our students 7 plus what equals 10? What is 7 plus 3? And again, because of familiarity with the arrangement, with the 10 frame, they'll be able to subitize that. And a simple arrangement like that allows the students to see four different number facts. Because we have this family of numbers, if you like, 3, 7 and 10 and from that we can develop four different number facts in addition and subtraction. And so just that one arrangement can be used in that way. Okay, so that's 10 frames again. Let's move on to looking at multiplication. And here we're going to use a lot of arrays. Now you can use 10 frames for certain number facts. So one example I like to use is multiple 10 frames with nine counters in every 10 frame. So 10 frames aren't difficult to make. You could duplicate them with a photocopier and you know put out six 10 frames and put nine counters in every one and then ask the students how many are there all together. And of course it's six tens take away six. So 10 frames can even be used with larger numbers. But for some we're going to want to use um, arrays. <clears throat> rows and columns. We want something ordered. We want to be able to divide it into pieces and look at what we call um, partial products and so on. So here's an example. We have a number fact 5 times 3. What could we do if a student doesn't know 5 times 3? Well of course they could rely on the number fact they do know as 5 times 2 plus another 5. And so a strategy for doing multiplying by 3, sorry that looks a little bit, we'd have to say that's one extra 5, but anyway, we would discuss this and say, look, there's double 5, what number is that? Add another 5 to it. So that's a way of showing the 3 times. Let's look at a harder number fact. This will take me a little while. So here's an example, not a terribly easy number fact, 6 times 5. Uh, sixes are 
some of the hardest number facts. I think you'll agree. The sixes, the sevens and the eights. Nines aren't too bad. As I said before, you can think of tens and remove some, but sixes are really quite a large number. And so uh, they're tricky. So for sixes, we build up to six from a known number fact. So six times five, obviously we've got a different strategy for the fives, but this I'm just running out of counter. So let's assume we're talking about the six at this point. What would happen if we just removed one set and we just have five here, assuming the students know they're five times number facts, five lots of five is 25, and then six lots of five is the same with another five. And so we can use an array like that to show that if we had an array of five by the, the number, we can add another one. Another way of looking at it for the same number fact is, so here we go, six again, is to divide this down the middle and say, well, there's three and there's three. What is five times three? And what is five times three? So if this, again, if the students know, um, not sure where to write this, five threes are 15 and five threes are 15, then double that, they should be able to double that and get 30. Okay, so there's a few more examples of the recommended approach for using mental strategies, using visual models to build mental strategies, to build visualization and so on to uh, learn number facts. The beauty of this approach of using visualization and discussion of mental strategies to build fluency is that it doesn't just build a capacity to answer number fact questions really fast. That's not our goal. I mean, it might seem like that to the students that we're focusing on number facts. So they go, you know, get their answers really fast and so on. But obviously we want those, to, those skills to be put to good use in mathematics. But there's a flow on effect here. I'll show you what I mean. So with a, a question like 1003, take away 998. Most students seeing that, who've learned to do the written process, will start crossing out numbers and regrouping and subtracting and working out one place at a time. But if you have developed the ability to subtract numbers mentally and had that extended, so let me show you what I mean. Supposing we had 17 take away eight. A student doing that using a strategy approach can say, well, that's almost the same as taking away 10. So let's take away 10 and then add two more. So that would make seven and two. The answer is nine. You could apply the same process here with just bigger numbers. So if we say this is almost a thousand, let's take away a thousand, leaving three and add two more. The answer is five. Let's try a multiplication example. So let's say, oh, let's try 25 times six. Now, again, ordinarily with the algorithm, you go six times five is 30, blah, blah, blah. And you start, you know, crossing out and carrying and all that sort of thing. But a student who's learned to think about numbers in their head could see that um, perhaps this is the same as three lots of 25 doubled because that's what we do with the six times with smaller numbers. Well, that's one of our strategies. So three lots of 25 is 75. I can double 75 and get 150. Or they might say, well, I know that four lots of 25 are 100 and two lots of 25 is 50, it's 150. And so this approach will have the effect of developing students um, a confidence and a capacity to use mathematics with bigger numbers and not be hampered and continually having to fall back on using um, written methods or for that matter calculators. So um, in a similar way, a student approaching this who doesn't know the algorithm but uses a calculator for everything may reach for a calculator um, in a similar sort of way that is slow and cumbersome. So. This approach will develop that. Let me just tell a little story. I visited a classroom recently. It was a year five classroom in Australia and the students were calculating the areas of rectangles. That was the new learning that they were doing. So they'd learned what a, you know, how to calculate the area and they were using the formula. And the triangles were so, such sizes that they needed two digit numbers to multiply by two digit numbers. And as I walked around, I found they were applying the multiplication algorithm incorrectly. They didn't know what to do with all the digits and they were making mistakes. But not only that, 
within the algorithm when they were adding their the you know the the digits within the algorithm i watched a child and it was not just one there were several children that i saw in a group who were using their fingers to add numbers together so there was a question whether the child had to add eight plus four and she literally used her fingers to count on four from eight so not only did she you know struggle with multiplication she struggled with addition and didn't even know addition number facts needless to say the knowledge the teacher was aiming for of learning about applying a formula to the area of a rectangle just went by the wayside because the students were so so hampered by lack of ability at the basic level so I believe that this approach helps students to be free it, it, it frees them from being locked into use, using any sort of mechanical method, whether that's an older style written algorithm or a more modern calculator. Either one is slower and more cumbersome and um, it just wastes time and mental capacity if a child could otherwise you know, work out the answers in their head. And so the capacity that we're building in our students is the ability to visualize the numbers and be able to think flexibly about it and be able to see, as I showed before, depending on the question, depending on the numbers that are there, identify the features of the numbers that make calculating the answer easy to do because they've built up this foundation of, of knowing their number facts. Now, something I'd like to emphasize at this point is that um, the approach that we're recommending is an entire system. So it, it's not something you do you know, for a couple of weeks and see if it works. It, it develops, as you can see, I think, from the, the, the explanations that I've provided in these videos, it's going to need to be done over a long period of time, over, you know, uh, really several years for a student to develop their mental um, strategies for all of the, the different operations. And I understand that you might be wondering if it's going to work for your class, and I fully understand um, that there are so many different ways to teach mathematics and so many different ideas of what works and what doesn't work and so on. So I wanted to share with you some comments that we've had from teachers that have used it. Uh, this system has been effectively trialled by teachers in the school that my wife works at. Um, it started with a single ebook that Trish was using with her own Year 4 students and then it grew from there so that um, after a year of doing that, and achieving success with the students. The year five teachers the next year said, well, what, what can we follow up? You know, after doing that, we don't want to repeat them again. And so more books were developed. And then the teachers of earlier grades were asking for something to help their younger students to um, get them ready for the work that was going on in year four and so on. And I suspected that teachers would enjoy using them. Teachers would see the benefit from all the, the strategies and the approach and um, you know could see that it was going to help the students but I didn't expect the students to enjoy it very much and you know there's we don't ask children do you want to go to school today and you know they go to school because they have to and they do mathematics in class because they have to and we'd like them to enjoy it but if they don't well you know it's still important so I wasn't I were really honestly I wasn't prepared for the students to enjoy it to the point where they were saying, can we do more? And when are we going to do our worksheets? And when are we going to do our practice? And can we be timed today? Um, I've got some testimonials that teachers have provided us with. And over and over again, the teachers are saying, the students get all excited. And um, Nola, for example, said, the kids love it because they all try and beat their time. And that's the whole aim. And so for me, it's a really good way of being able to see where they've come from and how they're going. Um, Kylie, who's one of the first ones to use it, um, said her students absolutely loved it. She put the word loved in capital letters. And she said a kid who was 15th would look at who was in front, 13th and 14th, and try to beat them, etc. We had so many mini competitions going on between similar ability kids that they didn't care if they were last or near the top. So the approach for practicing the strategies that we recommend is to time the students and so the teacher starts a stopwatch, the students all start their work and go through the page of number fact questions and when they finish they call out finished and the teacher tells them what their time was and they write it on the sheet of paper. That way the student can see the next day if they're 
speeding up, they're getting better times. And of course the students enjoy doing that. And as Kylie said, they enjoy beating their friends um, who are at a similar ability. So they didn't have to be at the top of the class. They're still able to make very good progress. Um, there's one more over here. Michelle um, posted a comment on Facebook the other day and said, my class just love the 10 minutes a day. I've had them write what they like about it and I just need to type it up and send to you. So I'm looking forward to that. And she said, I have one boy who was just failing miserably at his times tables at the beginning of the year and today, and this is um, about eight or nine months into the year, after going through square numbers with him once, he got the page all correct and was able to read out the answers to the rest of the class. And you can sense the pride in that teacher's um, little comment and the pride that would have been in that boy that he was able to read out the answers to the class. So it's stories like that that just thrill my heart and I'm just so, um, so gratified to see that the system not only works at an academic level and we can all say yes let's do a well organized system but the students themselves enjoy it and uh, um, you know are making good progress. So um, we've come to the end of this video. Um, I at this point you may feel that you've seen enough and hopefully you've enjoyed the videos and I've given you some things to think about and um, I'm I'm happy for that to be the situation. But if you'd like to go further, as I've just um, explained, we do have a system. So we've developed a whole program of worksheets that develop the mental strategies that we'd like to show you. So in the next video, which will come in a couple of days, I will send you an email and the next video will explain the whole system and the, all the different levels in the books and so on. So once again, if you'd like to leave a comment on the page, please do so and I really look forward to seeing you next time.